heifer was exhibited by Will Sarley Ranch of Condi. Class 2, Lot 21, February 1st, 18 heifer. get a February heifer here who comes in kind of a similar type and pattern to the April heifer from the last class and I think you just got to really appreciate the way this female is built on her top line she's extremely strong down her sh uh, behind her shoulder there extremely level as you read her down her top with just a tremendous amount of extension from her shoulder back and really a, a female that's still extremely feminine package one that's again just extremely level in her design very correct in terms of her balance from that regard Bring them back in for the champion reserve. This is it, just two. Sponsors of the day are Rely Bank and Plains Commerce Bank. Thank them very much. Well, again, just a pair of heifer calves to get from, but I think uh, an opportunity to really add some uh, some positives uh, to your program uh, on the female side here in this Charlet show this morning. I'll just uh, talk again about each of them and what I see as their strength in this particular pair. The uh, April heifer down here is one, again, a commented on and having just a tremendous amount of length, but still being very attractive up front, I think, as we get them out here and, and look at this particular pair. She, to me, seems to be the, the three to more more three-dimensional heifer of the two, one that's just got a little bit more turn and curve and shape to her rib cage. I think she's got a notch more attractive set to her rear leg and the one that at the ground I prefer just a little bit better. If we get into the February heifer here, uh, again, I think uh, as I talked about in class, she's built so good right out of her shoulder there and she does that better than the April heifer in front of her. She's one that just ties up neater right there at the top of her shoulder. Again, the same thing, same types of heifers though from a performance standpoint, a length of body standpoint, and again, a quality standpoint. So I'll go ahead and put this down. We'll go ahead and pick your grand and reserve champion, Charlay Heifers. Congratulations to these exhibitors. So your grand champion heifer is lot number 25, exhibited by Wells Charley Ranch of Condi. Reserve champion is lot number 21 from Vedvi Charley Ranch at Lake Preston. Class three bulls. There's three in this class. These bulls will range in age from March 9th through March 18th. First bull in was born March 18th. 
second bullion born March 10th. Third bullion was born March 9th. I think three super high quality bulls out of here. And again, I, I, I don't think we should be surprised that we see some variation in terms of types and kinds uh, at these uh, consignment uh, type sales. Uh, I think it's kind of the neat thing about these consignment sales and that you have the opportunity to find the type and kind that you like uh, relative to what's gonna work for you. Uh, we would expect this variation, just we're coming from different programs here uh, and really shows what a breed has to offer. I think three bulls here that, again, I think all high quality, I think all uh, have, a, have a place and really uh, all have value relative to what you're trying to do. The bull on the far end is the bull to me that just balances up the best. He's the bull, I think, as you study him from the side, he's the one that's got uh, perhaps the most uh, in terms of look and balance and profile. He's really attractive up front, but I guess what's most impressive to me is you get right on top of this bull. He's also probably the best just in terms of his rib shape, particularly up high. He's got more spring and shape of rib. Bull's got plenty of stoutness when you get in behind him. He's extremely wide-based and structured. And again, like I said, does that in a lean, clean, fresh, uh, extremely attractive, uh, sound-made package. The just sheer pounds bull is probably the bull that comes out here in second. He's the biggest frame bull. He's the bull that's probably, to me, again, the, mo the stoutest in terms of his structure, the stoutest uh, in terms of uh, the way he's built at the ground there. A lot of length of body in that bull. And again, I think just a, a sheer pound maker that, uh, again, you grow to appreciate in the Charlet breed. The bull here in third is, uh, is one that uh, just a nickel more moderate in his frame. And in actuality, uh, and proportionally, he's the biggest body bull in the class. He's the deepest in his rib cage. He's one that appears to be an easy doing kind of bull that's got some width and some mass to him. He's surely square enough when you get in behind him. Maybe just not quite as attractive uh, as you study him up front and surely maybe just not quite as attractive in the way he sets in his rear leg, but I still think a sound, functional, good doing bull that's got a, a lot of value to whoever's going to tie into him. So winning that class is lot number 17 from Keppen and Charlays. In first place, second place is lot 18 from Wells Charlay Ranch. And third place is lot 16 from GNM Charlay Ranch of Lake Preston. Next we have class four bulls. There's four entries in this class. Three days of age separate this class. They're all February bulls. The first bull into the ring is lot 13, be a February 25th bull. Scott just jumps in there. He says, the heck with this lady's first deal.
Tyler, we may not be able to tell the difference in the bulls, but we dang sure can the exhibitors, can't we? <laughs> so the first bull being led in is a February 24th of 2018. Now Mel's in the lead. The bull the young lady has is a February 25th bull. The third bull in is a February 24th. And lot 10 is a February 22nd. So just three days of age separate these four bulls. Judge today is Tyler Melrow, longtime seed stock producer, show judge, former South Dakota State University champion judge, a ring steward is Weston Geppert. From the American Charlotte Association. Thank you for being here, Weston. I think, again, there's some, some close decisions throughout uh, this particular class, uh, but I really like the bull that I'm uh, going to go ahead and start with. He combines a lot of the positives to me. Uh, obviously, he's got the performance that we would expect in terms of being a big frame, long-bodied, square-made bull that's got a lot of top shape in him, a uh, bull that's big, big-footed and heavy-structured. Big testicle, just a lot of quality in that particular individual uh, to start off with. It gets a little closer in my middle pair, and again, I uh, just opted for a touch more performance in, in uh, uh, the, the ladies bull here that's just coming around the corner. A super long-bodied bull, a bull that uh, just has a tremendous amount of growth. You can read in him there. He's, again, a big-footed, heavy-structured, rugged-made kind of bull uh, that I think just kind of reads a little pounds heavier. Uh, there's a lot of pieces I really like about these next two bulls, and in particular this one coming around the corner. 
I think as you read him uh, from behind, he's a notch more expressive in his muscle shape. He's got just a bit more turn and shape to his quarter. He's a bull that's really got an attractive look when you study him up front. I think a bull that's got a lot of quality from that standpoint. Again, I think one that can just uh, uh, make calves better for you as you kind of move forward in your particular program. I think a lot can be said the same about the bull that comes out here in fourth. Very stylish, very attractive, a really neat made and designed kind of bull that's square enough hipped when you get behind him. He's just pretty immature in this class, and I don't think that's uh, anything to really discredit him or discourage you from uh, continuing to pursue, pursue a high-quality Charlotte Bull. He's one I think will uh, have a lot of value again later today. So winning that class is lot 12 from Jensen Charlays. In second place, lot 13 from J&M Charlays. In third place is lot 10 from Van Dyke Charlays. And in fourth place is lot 11 from Logan Whisker. We will now have class five bulls. There are four entries in this class. These bulls are all February bulls, February 14th through the 19th. So just five days separate these animals. be lot 9, 8, 6, and 15X. Again, the age of these bulls is February 14th through the 19th. Again, I think a super high quality class, and I think, uh, again, compliments to these breeders. There's, again, opportunities all the way throughout. Um, obviously, just some differences in, in presentation and some of these sort of things, but uh, again, a lot of quality in cattle from top to bottom. The top pair is really, really close in my mind. I guess, uh, uh, to me, uh, the, the challenge becomes is, is um, how do you overlook the, the overwhelming amount of performance and mass and dimension that the big bull has on the far end? 
I think there's some things that uh, become the advantages of the other three cattle behind them in that particular pair. But uh, I, I think they're just an overwhelming amount of performance. He's long-bodied. He's deep. He's square-made. He's a bull that's got just a, a tremendous amount of muscle in him. I think he's uh, sure long enough in terms of his step, particularly when you consider how much mass and muscle and dimension and length there is in that high-performing critter. The bull that's here in second is one to me that uh, is a notch neater and more attractive in the way he's designed. I particularly like the way he's built uh, from hooks to pins better. He's neater in his, in his hip design. I think maybe just a notch more comfortable in the way he sets his foot at the, at the ground there as well. And again, that's what makes it really close because I think that's an extremely well-balanced bull, a bull that's got a lot of quality and muscle and product in him. He's a bull that uh, has plenty of performance as an individual, just really an overwhelming one in terms of uh, mass to start the class off with. I think a bull similar to the bull in, in second is this bull here in third. Long-bodied, I think he's right in terms of his design and structure and balance. A bull that's got plenty of look, plenty of performance for that standpoint. One that maybe just gives up some in, in terms of mass to those two individuals ahead of him. One that's maybe just not quite as high-powered, but I think high, high quality, no doubt. And then again, a little more unique type bull that uh, is here in fourth. I think if you're looking to make them just a notch cleaner, a titch uh, stouter in terms of their muscle shape and expression, I think this is the bull you're going to tie into. He's big footed, he's heavy boned, he's sound moving. The bull's got a lot of good to him that comes out here in fourth. And again, I think uh, a bull that will continue to have value, value in the right place. So winning at class five is lot nine from Kep and Charlet Ranch in first place. Second place is lot eight from Kep and Charlet Ranch. Third place is lot six from Birch Charlays. And in fourth place, lot 15X from Van Dyke Charlays. We will now move to class six of the bulls. These are early February. First bull in the ring is a February 8th. The next bull is a February 8th, and the final bull is a February 3rd. There's three bulls in this class. These are early February. Again, like I commented in that first class, we see some differences in, in types and kinds of bulls as we as we go through those classes. And and again, I don't think that's a that's a discredit. That's a positive. Uh, I think as you look and, and see these breeders come through here, uh, their their types and kinds relative to what uh, they're bringing are, are very consistent. They do a, an extremely nice job. You can tell they have programs. They have goals. And if your goals align with with them, I think uh, you're in, you're in good hands because the quality has been deep. We've not seen a bad one yet. They've all been good, and I think this class is certainly true of that. It's just some small things that I use to, to sort these out. I don't have anything in front of me as far as 
data or numbers or anything like that, that's surely going to add to your decision making in the process. Again, I just am trying to look for the bulls that, that uh, offer the things that we can physically, visually see out here. And there's just a really high quality one uh, to win this particular class. Uh, he's the performance bull in this particular class. Not uh, uh, only is he the big frame, long body bull, he's the one to me that's perhaps the most uh, impressive in terms of his width and muscle expression. He's a big topped, extremely heavy muscle bull that again, I think is real good and, and correct and sound in terms of his feet and legs. A lot of quality in uh, in that particular individual, and I think uh, pretty ideal in, in my personal opinion uh, of what we'd expect from a Charlotte bull. The next pair, again, is closer in my mind. They're bulls that are different. A touch greener bull that comes out here in second, but again, I think very consistent with what we've seen before, and that he's an expressively muscled bull. He's big-footed. I like the way he handles his rear leg better and the way he sets down at the ground better than the bull that follows him. I think he reads just a notch longer bodied as we get him out here and, and study him from the side, and those are some of the small things that separate a close pair. I like the, the bull that comes out next, and that he's a wide-based, wide-made bull, perhaps as much total turn and curve and shape to his rib cage as any of the bulls we have in this class, and just maintains a lot of balance and power. I think a pretty ideal Charlotte bull, in my opinion, and again, disappointing that he goes third in this particular class, but evidence that you're going to have an opportunity to buy some quality cattle all the way through the sale today. So winning class six is a lot four from Kepin Charlet Ranch. And lot second place is lot 5X from Van Dyke Charlet Ranch. And in third place, lot three from Vedvi Charlet Ranch. So your class winners there are lot four in first place, lot 5X in second, and lot three in third. Our next class is class seven bulls. These are January bulls. First bowl in January 24th. The next bowl in January 9th. After this class, we will bring in our First place class winners, pick our grand champion and reserve. I think two bulls that actually uh, have more similarities in terms of their type and kind than differences in this uh, particular class. I think uh, both bulls that uh, come at you in a really uh, square made, uh, kind of more uh, conventional kind of frame package, bulls that uh, have a lot of body and mass to them. I think they're just a little more bull in the bull that wins. He's certainly an extremely big footed, extremely heavy structured kind of bull extremely square when you get right in behind him and read him from a muscle and width standpoint. Sure, pulled apart in the way he, uh, he's built in his chest floor and really all the way throughout. Just love the mass and dimension and, and, and quality in that particular individual. Again, a high quality individual here in second. A bull to me, it reads maybe just a notch neater in terms of his pattern than a bull that wins that class. In particular, he's cleaner in his sheath and, and just a touch cleaner when you study him up front. A sound moving, square made, big bodied, practical bull. Uh, again, that it really, uh, it really represents the Charlotte breed extremely well. Uh, from that standpoint. So back into the ring for our grand champion bull. We need lot 17, lot 12, lot 9, lot 4, and lot 2. Your grand champion bull will go in contention for the supreme champion bull, which will be uh, 
selected here Friday afternoon. Supreme Roll Bull goes $1,500 to the consigner and $1,500 to the buyer. Then a coat will be given to each uh, champion bull and heifer consigner in each breed. And in addition, there will be a drawing from the uh, consigners of each breed for a coat. Our Supreme Roll sponsors are listed at the back of the show arena. It's Farm Credit Services of America, Dakota Bank, First Bank and Trust, First Premier Bank, Glacial Lakes Energy, Great Western Bank, Meyer Insurance, Midwest Egg, Titan Machinery, Plains Commerce Bank, Relia Bank, LG Seeds, Wells Fargo, and your Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Thank you very much, sponsors. Once again, back into the show ring, if we can have lot one. Lot one is from Kepin Charlet Ranch and is a March 10th bull. Our next class winner is lot 12 from Jensen Charlet's, a February 24th of 2018. Our class five bull winner is lot nine from Captain Charlet's, a February 19th, 2018. Behind the young lady is class six bulls, lot four of Captain Charlet's, a February 8th. So approximately two months of age between the first bull in their offering. So your grand champion, Charlet. We've uh, accumulated some folks who've gone through here, and, and those that are here, give these uh, breeders a round of applause on their lineup of Charlet Bulls. Again, I think a really good set, and <clears throat> as you think through the classes here that, that we've had, if you've been around to watch the, the entirety of this, uh, this bull show, I think top to bottom, uh, there's going to be a, a, an opportunity to buy a, a good bull uh, all the way through this deal here later today. Uh, and again, I think as you get these back out here, I think you kind of start to see things pull together a little more in terms of, of type and kind. Uh, I think bulls that are representative of the breed from a standpoint of some growth and performance. I, I would hope in most cases are the individuals that were uh, at the front end in terms of structural correctness and balance. Uh, bulls that just have a lot of muscle and product. They're high quality individuals that uh, I think uh, are going to do a lot of good. And, and again, as we talked about going down through those classes, uh, we run into some differences in terms of type and kind. Uh, they might be your type and kind, so make sure you spend some time in the back of the barn here visiting with these breeders uh, on a really high quality set of Charlotte Bulls. Uh, with that, I'm going to take one more look and we'll uh, pick your Grand Reserve Champion Charlotte Bulls. So lot four of Kep and Charlet Ranch will be your grand champion bull. He was calved February 8th of 2018. He is a polled purebred bull. pick a reserve champion.
quality really runs deep here this year in Watertown. This is why the judge gets all the big money. Reserve champion. We'll go to lot 12 from Jensen Charley Ranch, Scott and Kim Jensen. So your grand champion of Charlet Bowl is a lot number four from Captain Charlet's at Volga, South Dakota, reserve champion, lot 12 from Scott and Kim Jensen of Lake Preston.
This is class one of the Red Angus show. The first one in the ring should be an April 6th calf. The second one should be a March 16th heifer. And the third one in is a February 21st. These are lots one, two, and three. So now as you look at them, the first one leading around the ring is a lot two, is a March 16th, followed by an April 6th, followed by a February 21st. So as he picks the winners of this, this will also be your grand and reserve as we only have one class of heifers. Is that correct, Pam? Yep. Pam? When they get done picking this class, this will be the grand and reserve also. Thank you. Since, since that's the way it is, let's just go ahead and I'll, I'll talk about each of these heifers individually and we'll pick a grand reserve champion heifer. That'll, that'll sort it out. Um, uh, again, uh, get going in our uh, Red Angus uh, show here this morning. And again, I think if you, if you think about uh, uh, shifting gears from the Charlotte over to the red side, uh, when we think about the Red Angus uh, uh, deal, I think we think first and foremost about the females that you get uh, uh, from that particular breed and the quality that they have and, and really the maternal qualities and characteristics that uh, that they provide for you. And I think all three of these heifers, uh, they're, they're long, they're feminine, they're, they're heifers that have a lot of quality about them uh, relative to... Uh, uh, really having a lot of confidence that, that they're going to be extremely high quality uh, and productive females in their herd. Um, we switched up just a little bit in, in terms of order to, to get them to cooperate a little better here. So we have a little older heifer here up front, uh, a heifer to me, just really, really long-sided. One of the two really, really long-bodied heifers out here, very feminine when you study her uh, up in her front end and head and neck, one that um, just extremely attractive uh, from that standpoint and a lot of quality in that regard. Uh, the younger heifer here that uh, is uh, ended up in the middle here, Super high quality uh, heifer to me that uh, uh, offers probably a little bit of dual function in that uh, I think she offers a lot from a maternal standpoint and that she's a big bodied square made heifer with plenty of width and mass and dimension to her. I think she's got just a little bit extra in terms of structural quality, one that uh, just reads really, really neat in her lines and her silhouette and pattern, one that, uh, again, I think uh, has a lot of extras. She's going to be a highly productive cow someday, but I think uh, can be a competitive junior prize project uh, in, in the short term as well. And then the really power heifer of the group is, is the older heifer here on the left. <laughs> Again, offers some of those things from a length of body standpoint we talked about in the front heifer with just a notch more in terms of width and power. She's a really high performing female. She's really bold made and square and, and has a lot of mass to her. I think there's a lot of good in her as well. And so all three heifers Real high quality, I think, really give you the look and, and, and understanding that they're going to be productive females, ones that uh, whether you choose to show them in the short term or just simply make cows out of them, I think they're going to have a lot of value in your particular program. With that, I'll go out and select your Grand Reserve Champion, Red Angus Heifers. So your grand champion heifer is lot number one, shown by Hanson's Red Angus. Pam and Joel Singray. 
Your reserve champion is lot number three. Brought to you by Thompson Red Angus. And lot number two, also from Thompson, Red Angus, finished out that class in third place. We have one bowl in class two. It'll be lot number four. Will be a April second of eighteen. Looks like we're getting getting another sponsor of the day, Meyer Insurance. Voted to have the best popcorn over in the N building. Boy, they've got good popcorn. This bull is a April 2nd. This is lot four, April 2nd of 18. I think just superb quality to start uh, this Red Angus show off with a bull that uh, uh, offers uh, a lot of the basics in terms of being a wide made, big bodied, heavy muscle bull, a bull that uh, has got some shape and, and some mass to him. I think with a few of the extras, again, just a notch uh, neater and more attractive up in his front end, a bull that's just got some quality in terms of his, his side view profile and pattern. And so a really, really good place to start off your Red Angus show uh, this morning. Once again, that bull was lot number four from Hanson Red Angus. Next in, class three bulls. We have three entries, lots five, lot six, and lot seven. Lot five, the first one in, was born March 10th of 18. Lot 6, March 9th, and Lot 7, March 1st. So just nine days separate the age of these bulls. Lots 5, 6, and 7.
This is class three of the bulls. Lot five, the first bull in the offering. Once again, was born March the 10th. Lot six was born March 9th. And lot seven was born March 1st. Talk to him real nice and smile, young lady. That'll work. Harold Singray, you're tardy. Not you're tardy. Three very good bulls out here uh, representing the, the Red Angus show here this morning. And uh, it's really close in my mind between the first two bulls. Uh, I think it's uh, really some small things that uh, that end up separating them. But uh, there's some give and take either way. And I could uh, I could see you, see you liking it um, uh, another direction. But there's just so much quality in this individual that wins. He's really a, a neat sheath bull that's really clean when you study him up through his chest floor. I think one thing I like in particular as I get around in front of that uh, big testicle bull is that he's just built better and neater right through his shoulder than the bull that's in second. He's built just a notch more attractive right there and I think uh, uh, probably a little more uh, indicative of, uh, of some calving ease and that sort of thing. But I think uh, with, uh, with that little extra shoulder, the second place bull brings you, you get a little extra power as well. It's a really wide square made bull. I love the fact that he's the long bodied, long hip bull in the class. He's got big testicles as well and just a lot of spread and dimension and mass in that individual. Uh, really uh, powerful and overwhelming performance, a high quality bull there in second. And then just a, a, again, the young ladies bull coming out here next, uh, uh, get him by himself a, a little more, but a bull that's just really showed nice for this young lady here in this class. Uh, really nice disposition on that super clean made bull. He's a really attractive bull. He's perhaps as long a fronted and, and attractive bull uh, as any of them in the class. Again, merely neat in his design of his shoulder and a bull that's very correct and balanced as he gets out and goes. Just a greener bull in this class, and I don't think that uh, should be to his detriment as you consider bidding on him here this afternoon. So winning that class is lot number seven, a pure red bull, March 1st bull from Hanson Red Angus of Hazel. In the second place is lot five from Thompson Red Angus. And in third place, lot six from Mark and Mary Kay Lasik. Once again, lot seventh in first place, followed by lot five and then lot six. Our next class four bulls, there's eight entries in this class. They are lots eight, 11, 12, and 10X. Lot nine is, is an out.
once again, if you were late getting here, the grand champion female went to Hanson Red Angus with lot one. Should be lots 8, 11, 12, and 10X coming. If any of you people on the stands have a camera, it's kind of a Kodak moment to see Dean Odden holding a fork. these first two shows the the number of entries are not extremely high but the quality is very very good so be sure and go back and talk to the exhibitors so, so coming into the ring now are four bulls lot eight is a February 28th bull. Lot 11 is a February 13th bull. Lot 12 is a February 13th bull also. And lot 10X was born February 13th. So just two weeks age difference in these February bulls.
Because most of these bulls will be one year of age next week. Don't worry, these things will all be broke by the time they go home. I think a really high quality class again, and, and uh, I think a close pair up on top uh, of just two, I think no, no easier way to put it than just two really high quality individuals, uh, two bulls that uh, uh, have a lot of quality to offer you in, in terms of their look and their balance and profile, bulls that uh, I think are are uh, again just uh, really unique as far as their balance and pattern and profile and and at the same time still uh, coming at you in high performing type packages. I guess as I get in on them and, and start to study these two bulls, uh, I read the bull that uh, I go ahead and start with is just being simply the heavier muscle bull. The two, he's got more shape and dimension when you study him up through his hip and I think when you study him from the side, you can see he's got more shape and, and dimension to his stifle as well uh, as you read him. Just a lot of power in that bull. He's really big in his middle. He's smooth in, in, in his forerib. He's a bull to me that uh, again as I get in front of him there, probably reads uh, just, a, just a nickel truer in uh, the way he places weight and goes out of his front end out of that particular pair. Uh, but uh, again, I think a lot of quality and a lot of good in him. The bull here in second is maybe the one I prefer, maybe just a notch more in terms of the way he sets and places his rear foot. He's a long strided bull. He's really correct in his hawk. He's a heavy structured, heavy bone kind of bull that's very balanced, long bodied, level design, very attractive up front. He's a really deep, deep man kind of bull with a big set of testicles on them and I think just a tremendous amount of quality uh, from end to end and really both of those pairs and not to take anything away from the bulls here in third and fourth uh, they got stuck in a super high powered class here because the bull coming out here in third he's got the pieces to indicate his performance he's long body he's a bull that's plenty wide enough in the center part of his rib cage I think he's got enough muscle when you get in behind him and I think he does the basics just extremely extremely well uh, there in that third place individual and they round out the class, a bull that's maybe just a nickel more moderate in his frame, and if you're looking to kind of tone things down, if you're just simply looking at trying to make Red Angus influence females, I think he's a deep body, uh, deep body bull with plenty of those types of characteristics to continue to move you forward. So winning that class is lot number 11, a consignment from J.K. Red Angus at Lisbon, North Dakota. Second place, lot 10X, also a consignment from J.K. Red Angus of Lisbon, North Dakota. Third place is a lot eight from Thompson Red Angus of Elkton. And in fourth place, a lot 12, also a consignment from Thompson Red Angus of Elkton. We have one older bull in this class. We will have our judge Tyler Melro evaluate this animal. Then back into the show ring for our grand champion Red Angus bull, we will need lots Four, seven, eleven, and the one that's in here already. This bull was born July twenty second of two thousand seventeen. Really nice uh, single entry aged uh, Angus bull here, a bull that uh, I, I think uh, a bull relative to his frame is, is an extremely long ribbed, long bodied bull. Well, it's got a lot of length of hip to him when you study him and, and I think you get in behind him. There's still plenty enough power to match up with those things. Again, I think just a lot of quality. We'll bring him back out here in just a minute as we select our Granite Reserve champion, Red Angus Bulls.
So back into the show ring for our grand champion drive. We will need lot four. Lot four, once again, is from our first class. It is a April 2nd bull. Lot seven is a March 1st calf of 18. Lot 11 is a February 13th calf of 18. And then our older bull is a July 22nd of 17. Four entries in here for the Grand Champion Drive. Once again, the Grand Champion Bull will go on Supreme Row. That'll be selected here Friday afternoon. There'll be $1,500 to the consigner and $1,500 to the buyer. Once again, I'd like to thank our Supreme Row sponsors, Dakota Bank, Farm Credit Services of America, First Bank and Trust, First Premier Bank, Glacial Lakes Energy, Great Western Bank, Meyer Insurance, Midwest Egg, Titan Machinery, Plains Commerce Bank, Relia Bank, LG Seeds, Wells Fargo, and your Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Thank you very much, Supreme Roll sponsors. In addition, a coat will be given to each consigner of the champion bull and heifer in each breed. Four really high quality red Angus bulls. They'll offer you this afternoon. The Charlet sale will start out at 12 o'clock, followed immediately by the red Angus sale, and then the Simmental sale. Let's go ahead, folks, and put our hands together for these red Angus breeders and give them a round of applause. I, uh, again, uh, just a, a super, super high quality show. I think it's pretty uh, plain to see that uh, uh, when you look at uh, these four individuals, uh, that uh, these consigners have, have put the time and effort in uh, to bring in an extremely high quality uh, show from end to end. And uh, I think there's uh, really four deserving individuals that are, that are back out here uh, as representatives of each and every one of these classes. They're bulls that uh, in, in each of those particular classes, I think, offer just a nickel more in terms of mass and stoutness. Bulls that had a little more in terms of muscle. Bulls that, uh, again, just that a few extras as well as far as look and balance and pattern and profile go. Uh, and I think all four, uh, I think we can safely say that about that they do those things uh, extremely well. Um, as is the case with uh, any of these, uh, I don't have any numbers. I don't have any data with me. It's just simply asking me to go out and, and uh, what my expectation is or what, uh, what my opinion is of these physically as you study them out here, uh, which are the bulls that, uh, that you read as best representing this particular breed and, and really uh, um, being, being the higher quality individuals from that standpoint. Each program is different. There's some high-performing bulls that walked out of this ring that aren't back out here right now. There's some really high-quality individuals with some muscle and some mass and some, uh, some, some maternal traits that I think will be positive as you consider their Red Angus daughters. And so, again, spend some time back in the barn. Visit with all of these breeders that can sign here today uh, because... <coughs> because they brought you a really good set of cattle to, uh, for your uh, viewing and to bid on this afternoon. I guess I'm going to take one more look. I, uh, I think uh, there's just some really good cattle out here. I think no matter which way you go, you'd be okay doing it. But uh, we'll take one more look. We'll pick your grand. The second place will come back out, and we'll pick your reserve. Congratulations. I'd also like to thank Pam Singray and Dean Odden, your show and Sale managers, your grand champion bull, is Lot 11. Lot 11 is brought to you by J.K. Red Angus 
of Lisbon, North Dakota. We will now bring in lot 10X. Stephanie Bear gets to show cattle here at the farm show this year again. The reserve champion will go to lot seven. A consignment from Hanson Red Angus of Hazel. Once again, we would like to congratulate J.K. Angus on having the grand champion, Red Angus, lot number 11. The reserve champion was lot number four.
if you're just coming and wondering what's happened so far, in the Charlet show, the grand champion heifer was lot 25, a consignment from Wells Charlet Ranch, and the reserve champion heifer was lot 21 from Vedvi Charlet Ranch. And on the Charlet bulls, the grand champion bull was lot four from Keppen Charlet Ranch at Volga. And the reserve champion was lot 12 from Jensen Charlet Ranch of Lake Preston. On the Red Angus division, the grand champion heifer was lot one a consignment from Hansen's Red Angus. The reserve champion was lot three, a consignment from Thompson Red Angus. Your grand champion Red Angus bull was lot 11, a consignment from J.K. Angus of Lisbon, North Dakota. And the reserve champion was lot seven, a consignment from Hanson Red Angus of Hazel. We'll be getting ready to start the Semental show in just a matter of minutes.
missed one too. This is purebred heifers. There's one in this class, lot 18. Lot 18 is a May 8th of 18 calf. Really nice May heifer to start out the Semitol show. A female that's really straight in her lines. You just got to love how balanced she is, how attractive she is through that front end. Really wide and square out over that top. Just a really nice uh, female this young man's brought to the town today. Lot 18 is brought to you by Philip Peck Family Semental. Be a May 8th of 18. That little bitty birth weight is 60 pounds. Next one in, class 2, there's three head. Lots 17, 16, and 15. These will range in age from April 1st through April 17th. would like to welcome our Simmental Queen helping out here this morning, Lindsay Vanderwall. Her parents are Dean and Polly Vanderwall. Lot 15 is an April 1st heifer, lot 16 an April 3rd heifer, and lot 17 is an April 17th heifer. These are all purebreds. In this show, they have separated the purebreds from the percentage heifers. Three really nice April heifers. We're just going to leave them in line. Uh, it just happens to be how they came in the ring. We're going to start out with a solid black heifer. This young man is going to lead out with a heifer that's really elegant in how she gets around the ring. She's really cool in that front end. She's really feminine made, but she's still got that power factor that, that you need in, in, in any kind of a breed that you're working with. Just really straighten her lines and a heifer that could go on and do some young uh, person uh, a lot of winning here next summer. Heifer coming in seconds, a little greener in her makeup, a heifer that you appreciate for how much shape she has through that middle and center portion of, of her rib cage, a heifer that's a little bit greener, as I said, but a heifer that just gets out and moves really well. I think this is a female that uh, with a little groceries, a little time, I think she's going to be able to compete as well. 
The moderate frame female coming in third is a heifer that you just really love her from in that forward motion. Really elegant in her front end, really smooth necked, really good top. A heifer that's just not quite as powerful as the top two, but three really nice heifers, all very good in their own right. So winning that class is lot 17 from Johnson Landon Cattle. Second place is lot 16 from Jason Foster. And in third place, lot 15 from Hank Family Semental. Our next class will have three entries. Lots 14, 13, 12, and 11. Lot 14 in the lead is a March 24th of 18. Followed by lot 13, also a March 24th. Lot 12, a March 20th. And lot 11, a March 12th. So roughly 12 days separate the age of these heifers in the show ring. Also like to welcome our viewers and watchers on liveauctions.com TV. I'd like to thank our sale and show managers, Gail Philippeck, in her acting as ring steward, and Deb Ford. Thank you, Gail and Deb.
Once again, these are March heifers. You notice Lindsay starts running away from me when I get ready to start talking to class. I told her she was going to give reasons here on a couple of these. This is a class that you could talk about all day long, and when you're buying a specific heifer, uh, make sure you have, I know every one of you has your own ideas and your own plans for your cow herd or your show string or whatever you're after. This is just how I happen to place them today. Tomorrow may be different just based on how they're moving or walking or, or what your priorities are. I'm going to start out with a combination heifer. This is a female that's modern or framework. She's really balanced, though, is what I love about her. She's good over her top. She moves out really free and easy. Just kind of puts all those pieces together in a nice symmetrical fashion. That's why she starts the class. The Baldy Heifer is a heifer that you really don't start appreciating her for what she can do until she starts moving. She's got some natural muscle over that top. She's got some good shape to that rib cage. She's really a balanced type of a female, just follows the type and kind very well with that first place heifer. The third place heifer is probably the most naturally muscled heifer. Heifer that's still green in her makeup and she's got the natural power that you're looking for in, a, in about any kind of cow herd you're after. Maybe gets a little bit shorter in her stride when she's out moving. Maybe not quite as level at over that hip, but if you want natural muscle, natural power, that's your female. The heifer in fourth here is a, is, a, is a female that you love the growth and power to. She's got a lot of femininity to her. She's really long and extended. She's definitely the largest frame female. If that's what you're after in your herd, by all means, this is a heifer to take. Uh, just a little bit uh, greener in her makeup today, maybe not quite as deep through that lower portion of, the, of a rib cage, but four really nice heifers in this class. So in first place was lot 13 from Theon Semmentals. Second place is lot 11 from Hank Family Semmentals. Third place, lot 12 from Foster Semmental Ranch. And in fourth place, lot 14 from Theon Semmentals. Once again, we have Lindsay Vanderwall, 
from Bruce, correct, or Volga? Bruce, your Semental queen here today. Well, the young lady in the ring is Joe Padal from the Everdeen Farm Forum. This is class four. There should be three entries in this class, lots 21, 22, and 23. Lot 22 is a half blood. Lot 23 is a three quarter blood. And lot 21 is also a three quarter blood. Oh, excuse me. I see this is your champion purebred. Really a nice trio of females, all very different, but uh, every one of you knows exactly what you're looking for in a cow or a replacement female or a, uh, or a show heifer, and I encourage you to go out in the back of the barn and kind of visit with the breeders. They'll kind of let you know what things are like. Um, I know my cattle at home are walking on pins and needles right now, walking on frozen ground and three feet of snow, and just come in here, they're really not sure of themselves. So a few of these are getting a little bit tighter in their in their pasterns, but uh, I, I wouldn't worry one bit about them. They're good functional cattle. They're cattle that are going to go out and work for you once this weather kind of breaks for us uh, eventually. feels like it's been going on forever, but it's only been a couple weeks so far. Um, I think we're going to be doing just fine. But three awesome heifers. Let's give them a big round of applause. Those of you that are watching online, uh, by all means, ask some more questions if you got anything for us. So lot 17 will be your champion purebred heifer. I'll pick a reserve champion purebred. And then we will move into the percentage show.
now we will have the percentage heifers. There should be four, excuse me, three in this class four. Be lots 21, 22, and 23. These range in age from April 17th to May 24th. Lot 21 is a three-quarter bred. Lot 23 is a three-quarter bred. And uh, lot 22 is a half-blood. Don't forget now, Friday, they've got that Northeast uh, South Dakota calf show right here, Stephanie. Or Saturday, excuse me. They've had it here for years. You can buy these young heifers and your 4 H kids or FFA kids, or whatever, can show them right here Saturday afternoon. Most gentlemen, there's what, 70, 80 head of cattle, maybe? Weather be a little colder this year, there might not be quite that many. Also, all Semitol heifers purchased at this sale are eligible for the Junior Semitol Association fraternity spotlight down in Heron. And steers also. A little faster on this particular class, and there's a lot of gives and takes on this class, but I'm just going to start out with the black heifer that's just got, shows that combination that you're looking for. She's got the balance, she's got the eye appeal, she's really square out over that top. Maybe a little timid when she's walking around the ring, but she's probably never used to more than just this gentleman looking at her every day, so that probably makes a little bit of a difference. Really a nice, super attractive, balanced female that's going to go on and make a heck of a show project for some for, for some youngster and a, more importantly a cow down the road. The red heifer is the heifer that you really have to appreciate when you get behind her. She's so wide and bold through that rump. She's got so much muscle and power when you look at her over that hip. But she still has an elegance about her neck. She's still got an elegance about her when she walks around the, around the ring. Really a moderate frame package. It's really neat to see a, 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 a solid red type of a Simmental heifer with this much power and she's got that much attractiveness as well. Just a really nice second place female. The female in third is a, is a female that's not as sure as she wants to be out here, but in a moderate frame, she's really square over that top. She's got some muscle down through the lower portion of that quarter. She's really thin and pencil neck, which is something you really need in a, in a young female. There's three really nice heifers in this class. All three of them have got their own attributes that you need to appreciate. So winning that class is lot number 21 from Voss Ranch, followed by lot number... 23X from Pleasant Grove, and then lot number 22, also from Pleasant Grove. These are your percentage females they're judging now. There's one entry in class five. We'll let him evaluate that. Then we've got one entry also in class six. Lindsay, it's your turn to talk this heifer. You can't mess this class up. 
just another combination female, and that's what I love when these, some of these heifers walk through the ring. You walk through there, and when I'm coaching, judging kids, I always tell them, kind of think backwards if you're really not sure. You say, what's wrong with the female? You look at her and say, what's wrong with her? Nothing. Really square made. She gets out and moves really well. Yeah, she's got a little attitude today, but of course, uh, like I said, if they're seeing one person every day with a feed bucket and one person putting a halter on them, it's a big difference, and they see over 100, 150 people uh, walking through the stalls in a, in a morning. So just a really nice female. Uh, take a look at her when you get back out in the, into the stalls and visit with the producers and see what their, what their thoughts are on what she would be like down the road. Lot 20. Is a consignment from Philippec Family Semental, be a three-quarter blood heifer. Now we need lot 19 into the show ring, lot 19. I'd like to thank our judge, Jeff Vanderwall, for judging this morning. I've seen Jeff judge a lot of county 4 H shows and whatever. I admire him for the way he works with the youth to get them involved and how he likes to have them do things. This is lot number 19. Lot number 19 is a three-quarter blood. Be born March 3rd of 2017. She was confirmed ultrasound bred to blaze of glory on May 10th of 18. It's always nice when you get to a farm show and you see a bred heifer that's expecting to calve really soon, but she's still got this much elegance to her, just so much body, so much dimension to her. She's in a moderate frame package, but a heifer that's going to calve here in 10 days, and she's still got that elegance about her, can still move around the ring. If you as a buyer are looking for an extra coupon, here's, a, here's one definitely to look at um, come sale time. Really a nice female. Wish she had a little more competition. So back into the, we're going to pick the champion percentage. Then after that, we'll pick the overall champion Semental female for Supreme Row.
I'm not going to take a lot of time. I hope you and, and the, around the ring have been able to get a good look at these cattle. Um, when we got single classes, I mean, it's easy for me to talk them fast, but I also want you guys to see them parade around and make sure it's what you're looking for in an animal. I hope those of you viewing online have been able to see the angles and what you're looking for. And, and if you got any questions, um, there's plenty of phone numbers in the catalog. By all means, call these people, and they'll be more than happy to kind of give you a, a bird's eye view of, of, of what your question is and be able to help you with whatever answer you have. Three excellent females. I grew up in this breed 30-some years ago, and there's a lot of people that I respect and I admire within this breed, and I admire what you guys as breeders have done to this breed. It's a lot different than what I showed with 10-frame uh, females that were yellow and white and every other color in the rainbow. So moderation has been awesome. I just love how functional these cattle are. I, I look up to you <clears throat> breeders for what you've done. Speaking of breeders, I wasn't able to be here yesterday, but uh, your old sale manager, Rod Mary, who we're honored as the, as the, for, from the farm show. Let's give them a big round of applause for all they did for the Simmental breed over the years. <laughs> I've learned a lot from Rod over the years, not just about uh, cattle, but also goats, sheep, every other species under the book, but more importantly, life. So um, it was well-deserved, uh, well-deserved recognition for him, and I'm glad him and Mary were able to receive that. With that, it's pretty obvious. Um, it'd take anybody uh, not to bring this Brett Heifer back for champion. I think she's going to compete very well for the Supreme Row. So congratulations to the big Brett Heifer for, for being champion on the percentage side. We're going to use the, young, the younger Heifer on the other end as our reserve. Congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause. Three really nice females. Now we need our champion purebreds back. Yep. The champion purebreds, we need lot champion in reserve, I guess. Champ would be lot 17. Lot 17 we need back into the ring. So lot 19, your Brett Heifer is your percentage champion. Brought to us by Ford Farms. And lot 21 is your reserve percentage. Brought to us by Voss Ranch. Boss Ranch from Brookings, Chris and Jason. Ford we have Farms to or Deb and Chris Ford. Sorry, keep going, Terry. You're doing a fine job. Oh, okay. Take it away. You got some major differences between the two with the purebred versus the percentage. The purebred, I just love how, how much length of body she has. Sometimes we lose some of that growth, some of that performance, some of that power when we get into the show heifer type quality, but this, uh, this heifer still has that. She has those combination of things that we're looking for. She's going to be, she's going to have no problem going to the, to, to the next show and, and competing very, very well. Um, really square her lines, really straight over that top. Just a female you need to appreciate about her. She's definitely not done growing. Really a nice female if you're looking for uh, something with some growth and some punch and you can do a lot of different things with her, whether you're raising females, bulls, clubbies, it doesn't matter. You can do it with her. The bread heifer is a little more modern her framework. I love her teat size. I love her muscle. I love her dimension. I love her volume. Um, it's a pretty obvious choice for me. We just got to go with this bread. She just got too much power. Congratulations on her. Our reserve will be the pure bread. See, a grand champion, Semental female, will be lots number 19 
exhibited by Ford Farms, Chris and Deb Ford, dear purebred champion. Lot number 17, exhibited by Johnson Landon Cattle, will be your reserve female. We will now enter the purebred bulls. There's only one in the first class, 5X, and one in the second class. Into the ring, we need class or bull five X.
Entering the ring, yep, we've been waiting on you. Entering the ring is 5X. He was born March 6th at 2.30 in the afternoon. These are purebred bulls. Well, just the one animal. I, I will say right away, March 6th is a good day to be born, but I was born at 3.35 a.m., not 2.30 in the afternoon. My mother still gives me a hard time about that, so that was the problem, child, still am. Really got to like this bull for how much muscularity he has. He just ties everything in so nice and neat, really good through that hip, but still has that nice front end extension. Now, do we care if bulls are pretty? No, but if they pass that on to their, their daughters, that is very, very important. So that's kind of a bonus when we get that, uh, that structural correctness through that front end like he has, but he still has the bone work. He still has the power um, like a bull should have. That bull was exhibited by Johnson Landon Cattle of Wessington. Now we need him to bring back in lot six. Be an April 11th bull. Lot six from Johnson Landon Cattle. This is lot six. This is an April 11th of 18. Be a purebred bull. Another single entry. I'm not sure if you're going to show two-handed in the champion drive or how you're going to do that. I'm sure it's been done before somewhere. Another bull is just really honest in his makeup. He's just so good out over that hip. Uh, really moderate in his frame size. A good a bull that's got enough power to him to really uh, go out and breed a pile of cows. A little younger in his age, but his weight per day of A is still obviously very good. Take a look at him, uh, whether you're online or in the seats. I think he's one that uh, could go ahead and do a lot of good for any cow herd. This is class nine. There's three entries in this class. Lots three, two, and one. These are February bulls.
These are purebred February bulls. Ready for reasons yet, Lindsay? You're getting paid the big bucks. You got out of school today. You got to make something work. You got like speech class or something you're missing? You don't have speech this semester? Yeah, last year, did you get an A? You got a B. Well, then now it's time to practice. Maybe you can get it moved up to an A. It's a possibility. Sorry, I like to abuse kids. You're wondering why the judge is giving her a cemetery queen a bad time, or I think it's his niece. That's uh, close enough. We're all related somewhere. We're going to start out with the bull here in the, in the top end. Uh, this is a bull that you just got to love for how much explosion of muscle he has. He's just so wide through the center portion of that quarter. Uh, just a bull that's just going to go out and breed a pile of cows. His testicular development is excellent. Not, as, not cooperating near as much as he needs to on a day like today, but uh, a bull that you just got to love him for his footwork, his muscle, his masculinity. He's just got a, that overall herd bull uh, look to him. The bull in second is definitely the balanced bull of the pair, a bull that maybe is a touch bigger than his scrotal, a bull that's really long-bodied. He's really put together really nicely, uh, just an overall nice package. Two bulls on this top end, just a little bit different in their type and kind, but two bulls I think they're going to go out and breed a pile of cows. The bull here in third is a bull that when you get him out in the ring, he moves out really free and easy. Just a nice, nice structured bull, a bull that's going to go ahead and work on a lot of cows as well. But three really nice February bulls. So winning that class is lot number one from Kerry Simmental's. In second place is lot three from Kerry Simmental's. And in third place is lot two from Theon Semmentals. Our next
So we need 5X, 6, and 1 back into the show ring for a champion purebred. They'll pick out the purebred champion. Then we've got two percentage bulls, then they'll pick out an overall champion. As I said in class, you've got three bulls out here that are so balanced and they've got so many little things about them. You just got to love the young bull for how much front end extension he has. He's so long sighted. He just puts all those little pieces together. Um, he's so well balanced from one end to the other. Um, a bull that's got a really good head about him. And I don't know what his numbers are, what his pedigree says, but what he reads to me is he's got some calving ease bred into him. He's just got that kind of look to him. If you're looking for something to kind of lengthen out your cows but still looking for some replacement females, that's one I would definitely uh, pay attention to. The bull and out of the second class is a bull that's got a little more power down low, a little more muscle muscularity in that lower portion of that quarter. Uh, a bull that's got enough stoutness to him. Not quite as long in his, in his body length as, as the first bull, but if you think this bull fits your, uh, your, your performance characteristics that you need, you should probably take this one home. 
the bull in third was not behaving as well today, a bull that's a little more rugged in his makeup, maybe a little plainer in his design through that front end, but you get in that back third of that bull, he's just so massive, so so beefy, he's just going to hang so many pounds of uh, true red meat on the rail when his calves convey a uh, carcass-wise. Three really nice bulls. I'm going to go out and pick your champion purebred. Um, by all means, if you've got questions online, please message Margo or give one of the people a call that are, that are listed in the catalog that you've got. You need to look at these bulls really hard because uh, they're good. So your grand purebred bull is a 5X at consignment from Johnson Land and Cattle from West Eden Springs. The reserve purebred is a lot one from Kerry Sementals from Blackhawk. We've got two percentage bulls, then we're going to pick our overall grand champion Semental bull. We need 10X and 8 into the ring, please. 10X and 8. There's approximately 30 days difference in the age of these bulls. These are January bulls of 18. Excuse me. Eight is a January thirtieth. The bull and the the other one is, is a March bull. little over a month different in age uh, in these two bulls. I'm going to go with the performance bull that's got a little more weight per day of age to him. Bull that's got some growth. He's got some performance to him. Uh, just take a look, hard look at him as a good range bull that's going to go out and breed a pile of cows. Definitely not the prettiest bull in the world, but that's not definitely not what we're buying when we're just trying to go uh, breed a bunch of cows at one time. 
The bull that's in second is a bull that just doesn't have quite the overall performance, but I love this bull and his testicle size. I love how he's put together. A little smaller, neater package. Uh, just doesn't have quite the weight per day of age as our first bull. But two really nice bulls, very going to be definitely used for a different type of a program. So winning that class is Theon Semitals with a March born three quarter blood, I believe. Is that right, Mike? In the second place is Lot 8 from Megan Toll, a 5 8 bred bull. Now back into the ring. We need Lot 5X. Lot one, and lot 10X. This will be for your grand champion Semmental Bull for Supreme Row. Once again, Supreme Row is $1,500 to the consigner. $1,500 to the buyer. Your sponsors of the day today are Meyer Insurance, Relia Bank, and Plains Commerce Bank. Also, Supreme Roll sponsors are Dakota Bank, Farm Credit Services of America, First Bank, First Premier Bank, Glacial Lakes Energy, Great Western Bank, Meyer Insurance, Midwest Ag, Titan Machinery, Plains Commerce Bank, Relia Bank, LG Seeds, Wells Fargo, and your Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Thank you, Ag Committee and uh, Supreme Row members, for your generous donations. This is for your grand champion. Semental Bull. Also want to thank Gail Philippek and Deb Ford, our show and sale managers. Really a nice group when you get four bulls out here that you got to appreciate things about every single one of them. And if you like the, a bull that I haven't said a whole lot of extra good things about, buy him. If he fits your profile, he fits your plan, if he fits what you're looking for in, in improving your cow herd, all four of these bulls could do it. Just a matter of what you need, what you're looking for, what you're after. The bull out of the uh, the champion purebred, he, like I said before, he's so extended, he's so cool fronted, but still puts that balance and eye appeal all the way back. Um, if you're going to be buying him, you might be buying one that uh, could possibly uh, work for that supreme row. He's going to be our champion, Semitol Bull. Let's give him a round of applause. So your grand champion bull is lot number 5X, brought to us by Johnson Landon Cattle. Our reserve uh, becomes a little bit, uh, I guess I can't say it's a extremely close, but there again, it's a matter of what you're looking for in your, in your program and what you need. I'm going to use the power bull, which would be the reserve purebred. As a purebred bull, he just got so much masculinity, so much power, so much muscle. I would just love to see what kind of a carcass yield grade we'd get out of his, uh, his calves. He'll be our reserve champion bull. Very deserving to all four bulls. Take a look at all these out back before the sale. Um, definitely, they all can find a good use in your program. So your reserve champion bull goes to Kerry Semmentals from Blackhawk, lot number one. We've got two steers, lots 24 and 25. The enter the show ring, please. Once 
One is an April calf and one is a June calf. You can purchase these steers and come right back Saturday afternoon and show them in the Northeast Calf Show. As well as you can any other the, of the heifers. Also, I want to remind the, the youth that the heifers purchased today are eligible for the uh, fraternity show down in Heron. All you have to do is do the paperwork today. Once again, we want to thank our Semital Queen, Lindsay Vanderwall. Parents are Dean and Polly Vanderwall of Bruce. Two steers that obviously come from the same uh, residence, and they're definitely, uh, like Gail just told me, they're not kid broke, they're grandpa broke, so that qualifies as kid broke as well. Uh, steers that are a little different, they're type and kind, whether, whatever you're needing for a show steer yet uh, in your program, I think both of them are here. We've got the steer in the front that's a little more refined in his makeup, maybe not quite as many pounds right now, but if you want to just go out and feed one and just kind of let, let him go, um, per se, come summer, I think he'll go ahead and do very well for you. The steer uh, here in the second hole, really doesn't matter what I say, it's what you think when you're when you're buying these calves for prospect or show steers. A little wider through that hip, maybe a little more natural dimension of muscle, a little longer bodied, a steer that's not cooperating quite as well today, maybe not quite as square out over those feet, but it's always neat to see how these uh, calves materialize as they get older down the road. But two really nice semitall steers, hopefully both of them um, will come back and for the retirity this summer. But congratulations to both of them. Test. Let's have a round of applause for Jeff Vanderwall. He did a fine job evaluating the cattle and Gail Philippek and Joe Fadal for helping. Thank you very much. Go out and visit with your consigners. They'll uh, be more than happy to visit with you. Sale will start at noon. With the Charlet, we'll go directly to the Red Angus and then the Simmentals. <laughs> 